China's imperial treasure belonged to just one man, the emperor, and the pieces were created for his eyes only. Now, the National Palace Museum of Taiwan wants to place these artifacts in the hands of everyone using the very latest technology. If we can apply all these uh, information technology to make all these collections more durable, more shareable, and more far reach, certainly that would be something a museum would like to do. Among those helping the museum achieve this is the National Taiwan University, applying its expertise in 3D imaging. We've got three angles all together. So now we can start filming from the top. When the camera is in the position, the table starts to turn. See the camera coming down. Now we'll get images from this angle. The object is then assembled into a 3D replica, its first use for a virtual online museum where unlike in a real museum, you can actually grab hold of the exhibits and turn them with a mouse. But that's still a little too removed. Now if you look at this, you'll see it's in a case. The software follows the hand's movements. See how it follows my hand? See the arrows? The image can be shown on a normal monitor or projected into this crisp wall. So it feels like you're controlling the object. The museum's precious artifact is in your hand. The museum has also harnessed another institution the Industrial Technology Research Institute. Their plan? To put us inside the body of the artist. We want to bring the two worlds together, especially um, when we talk about the Chinese culture. We wanted to combine culture and the arts with technology uh, to create a new world. A poem from the museum is projected onto a wall where two volunteers can read it. Beside them, the latest wideband detectors, like personal radar systems, remotely sense the rate at which they breathe. Another computer projects the poem onto the floor. Now one person can control the speed of the calligraphy. The other controls the ink flow. The sand is just there for a fact. If the volunteers can make their replica similar to the original artwork, this gives recordable clues as to the physical and hence emotional state of the original artist. In this way, any of us can feel what it's like to be in the throes of creativity. While technology can be revealing about the artifacts, there's still nothing quite like being in touching distance of the real thing. There's something special in being physically close to these prized objects, once handled by the Emperor Qianlong. When he began collecting Chinese art and artifacts, Qianlong felt a responsibility. Only he, the ruler of a vast empire, had the power to ensure that Chinese culture was passed on for the future to admire. He has been vindicated by the extent and value of this collection. The National Palace Museum believes that it is following in Qianlong's footsteps by adopting technology and innovation to broaden the appeal of the collection. It's moving from simply being a guardian of cultural tradition and passive exhibition space to a new global culture where advanced technology is being used to take this treasure to a world audience where ideas and creativity are encouraged to find new and different ways to share it with the world, where the old becomes new. Research into artifacts is like a person's beating heart. Without a heart, a person won't survive.
Without a soul, they can live, but their life won't be wonderful. But how can we make the artifacts more wonderful? That's the soul of our museum. The museum has room for only a small part of the collection. With constant new exhibits and swapping round the famous pieces, even then, at this rate it would take a dozen years to show the emperor's collection as a whole. On each return, the visitor can find a new treasure, something unexpected, or maybe an old friend not shown for years. Thanks to Qianlong's ambition, the sheer scale of the collection means that the museum will still draw in the public for years to come.